Next to our username, there is a drop down where one of the entries is my settings and tools. Now this is the user profile section of Team City, and it allows us to specify certain things in our profile as well as specify roles that we have in different projects and notification rules. The first thing we notice is the general tab and under here we can specify the username, our full name, email address, enter a new password and confirm password if we want to make changes. One of the important settings here is the version control username settings. Now, when we are working with my changes or when we are trying to associate a specific user that has made a change in version control and associate that user, map that user to a Team City user, this is where that setting is set. By default, what Team City does is take the username that you have in Team City and use that same one. It will assume that that's the same one that you have in your version control. If you want to change that, you can click edit. And then you can change it for each of the VCS routes, or you can specify it for all VCS routes, the default. So in this case, I can say, for instance, that in yes, my VCS user is also called demo user. Let's say, for instance, that I'm working with Git. What I could do is add a new VCS username. And I could say that the default for all Git routes will be my email address. So I could map this to my email address. So what happens now is that a new entry is created that is going to be the default for all Git routes. This means that when a project has a VCS of type Git, Team City is going to try and map changes, identify my changes from those that are done by mail at hadiheri.com when checked into version control. Back on the main page, another setting that we're interested in is the highlight my changes and in investigations. If checked, what happens is that our changes are highlighted as well as our in investigations. The show date time in my time zone allows Team City to display the date and time relevant to our own specific time zone. And last but not least, show all personal builds is to display all personal builds in our timeline. One of the main things that we can configure under the profile is the watch builds and notifications. Now, Team City, when a build fails, or when a build succeeds, sends out notifications, and these notifications can come in different flavors. It can be an email, it can be IDE notifier, a Jabber notifier, or the Windows tray icon notifier. What we can do here is configure these. Now, if I click on edit, for instance, on the email notifier, takes me to a screen where I can add notification rules. And if you notice that this notification tab is actually the same as we had here. So I can click edit from any of these or click on the notification rules at the top and then select the corresponding notification from this tab. Let's go ahead now and add a rule and see how it's done. If we click on add new rule, Team City will now display a series of conditions that we have to configure for that rule. To begin with, we can specify what we want the rule to watch. Would it be builds affected by our changes or for instance, builds from a specific project or builds from specific projects and selected configurations? We can filter here. For instance, we can write plugin and it will show us anything related to plugin. We can also say just watch system wide events. That means pretty much anything. Let's change back to builds affected by my changes. And now let's see the different options for sending notifications. Now Team City can send notification when a build fails. We can then specify to ignore failures that are not caused by our own changes or only notify us on the first failed build. So what we don't want to do is constantly get notifications of failed builds. We can also say to notify us when a build is successful. And again, only notify us on the first successful build. Other options include the first build error occurs, when a build starts, when builds fail to start, when build is probably hanging, uh, an investigation is updated, or when tests are muted or unmuted. Now, as a typical user, as a typical developer, we normally aren't interested in a lot of these areas. This would be more like a system administrator would be interested in that. Once we've defined the rule, we can then click save and that rule will be added. 
Now, it's important to know that rules are processed top down and the first one that matches is applied. Also, rules are inherited. So if there are rules defined in the group or users, then those rules are also inherited for us. Adding rules as an IDE notifier or Jabber notification or Windows Tray notifier is pretty much the same process. I can click, for instance, Windows Tray notifier and here select Add New Rule and the options are pretty much the same. The difference is that we can have different rules for different notification mechanisms. This is actually very useful. For instance, I want to receive a notification as a pop-up tray icon in the Windows Tray notifier every so often when a build fails or is successful and it doesn't really bother me. It's just a little balloon that pops up. On the other hand, I don't want to be so explicit about notifications in terms of emails. That is, I don't want my inbox to be flooded with notification emails about a build being successful or failed, etc. So we can have different rules based on the notification, which comes in quite handy. Back on the general page, on the right hand side, we see that we have the Team City tools. Now from here, we've seen that we can install some of the different plugins for IntelliJ platform, Eclipse plugin, Windows Tray Notifier, or the syndication feed. And if we want to install something, we can just click download, save it, and install it. The syndication feed allows us to customize the actual RSS feed, which we've seen that is also accessible from the bottom of any build history page. There's also a NuGet feed, which allows us to obtain information about the NuGet URL if we have that service activated. Last but not least, under My Settings and Tools, we can also get information about the groups that we belong to, as well as the roles that we have. So here I can say that demo user is assigned to one group, which is all users that contain all Team City users. And if I click on roles, I can see the different roles that I have. So we've seen that under the settings and tools, we can configure general information, configure the notifications and builds that we want to watch, download Team City tools, and do everything that's related to our user profile for the Team City user.